Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing my top 10 scariest moments in horror movies. Now this is my opinion. Now when it comes to scariest moments, there's things that scare me more than they would scare you. And there's things that maybe don't scare me that would definitely scare you. So when it comes to our top 10 scariest moments, what I love about scariest moments is I could do a top 10 and none of the top 10 that I give you will be on your list Maybe there's one or two, maybe not. And maybe you'll give me your top 10 and I'll look at them and think, they don't scare me at all, but it's different for everyone. And that's why I love these top 10 scariest moments. There are lists that maybe you can argue over, like top 10 best films, because we all consider a film being best. We've all got similar criteria, especially when it comes to horror. But when it comes to scariest moments, what scares me might not scare you and vice versa. So remember that when you're watching this video. When you look at one of the entries on the list and go, that's not scary. But remember, it scared me. And it doesn't have to have scared me today as an adult. It could have scared me when I was younger and left a scar for years. But when I watch it now, it doesn't scare me anymore. But because it scared me at the time, that's the reason it's possibly made it to the list. So bear that in mind, get into this. So let's look at my top 10. See, everything's okay. And at number 10 is when the entity walks behind Yara when he's coming after Jay. It just came out of nowhere. Now, this is probably, it is definitely the newest entry on this list. It's one of the scenes that genuinely scared me as an adult. I mean, I was watching this film thinking this is quite uneasy to watch because it was quite scary. But it's the, it's the way that the scene happened. Everything was so quiet. There was no music. Nothing was happening. And then when she opened that door and they were like what's wrong and the thing just walking towards it I was like oh my god that is freaky because it was the sound the score that happened at the time making that kind of ominous noise when we see the entity walking behind her and the fact that the entity was this huge tall guy rest in peace of course when he was walking towards her I just crapped myself for real <laughs> And at number nine is when the ghost attacks Jack in The Haunted from 1991. Maybe you haven't seen this film, guys, because it was a TV movie but from back in the early 90s. But there was a scene where the, this, this ghost that comes down the stairs and the way that it was shot, very dreamlike sequence. And I think that was quite intentional because we as the audience weren't sure if this family was making it up or if it was actually happening to him. But this ghost was coming down the stairs and I was way too young when I watched this scene because it looks like it was sexually attacking him as well. And it even showed itself to be, as far as I can remember, it showed itself to be one of his daughters at the time as well, as well as like a really scary looking guy. But the way it was attacking him, it just felt like a really dreamy nightmare sequence. And I couldn't get that scene out of my head for years and even when I watched it today I look at it and go oh I remember really being scared of this scene growing up and it hasn't really lost its touch I still think it's got that really nightmarish approach to it And at number eight, I call the scissor scene from Exorcist 3. I'm not even sure if it's scissors. It might be shears or whatever. But I always refer to it as the scissor scene in, uh, when I was younger. And I think it would have been higher on the list had it been a longer sequence. But I like the build up to the sequence where the nurse is coming in and out the doors. And it's quite clever where she goes into the, the door, closes it, and then reopens it again to turn the light off. But you can tell she doesn't really close it fully so that the, the person playing this entity comes right out. But it was just the way the scene happened. It was so quiet, just like a lot of the scenes on this list. It was so quiet and I wasn't expecting it to happen. And when it did happen, the score at the time just frightened me even more. So it was a kind of double whammy because not only did the scene frighten me, the score gave me a jump as well. And at number seven is Megan is missing with the body in the barrel. Now, this film wasn't good at all. I don't think this film was watchable at times. But when I watched it, I was intrigued by what was happening that I just had to continue watching. And I didn't know about the scene until it happened. You know, when you, you see a film, you kind of know what you're expecting. I didn't when I first watched this movie. I liked found footage movies at the time. And I thought this looks interesting because of the, the story. So I watched it. Nothing happened throughout this entire film. It was actually really boring. 
And I thought, right, I'm just going to keep watching. And then I, when I saw the body in the barrel, I wasn't expecting to see that because the film looked so cheap, but that scene looked so visceral and real that I was like, oh, what? That's disgusting. It's just the, the whole build up to it, it felt like nothing was going to happen even to that point. And I think that's why I was shocked because I wasn't expecting to see that. And when I saw it, it just looked so real. And I was like, oh my God, that was it worth the the watch? Maybe not. But if you want to be scared and, you, and if you weren't expecting that, maybe it was worth the price of admission. But at the same time, the film is boring, but that one scene completely shocked me. And in number six is the ending of Wreck or Record from 2007. Now, I didn't love foreign movies at the time and I, I thought I'm going to give Wreck a chance because I just got off the back of watching Quarantine, which I actually enjoyed, which is the remake to Wreck. And I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. So I watched Wreck and I was engrossed in it straight away. Absolutely loved it. It was obviously 10 times better than Quarantine. But there was just something about the lead up and the build up to the end of the movie. I was thinking... There's something up in that attic. They, they keep mentioning this thing. And then when the, the girl goes up to the attic and sees all the, the newspaper clippings and stuff, I'm like, there's going to be something up there. And I'm not going to like it. And when it happened, I was like, oh my God. But when we see the way it pans out with the, the night vision, I was I was actually genuinely scared. I didn't want to go to bed at night. Remember, this film came out in 2007. I saw it in 2008. So I was already a 24-year-old adult at the time. And watching this, I was I was covering my eyes. It's not that often I cover my eyes in films, especially as a fully grown adult. And watching it, I, I did, I've done this a few times. And I'm like, that scared me. And when something makes me do this as an adult, it's done something right. And at number five is Alice's phone video footage from Lake Mungo. Now, Lake Mungo is another one like Megan is Missing where not a lot happens in it, but at least the storyline was intriguing enough in Lake Mungo for me to go, okay, I'm invested, I want to see it. Lake Mungo is not a masterpiece, but there's something about it that's very eerie all the way throughout the film. And there's a, there's a, I don't really want to spoil too much for you if you've not seen the movie, but there's a mystery behind the story of this girl going missing. And when you see snippets of the video footage in the lead up to the end of the film and then when you see the actual video footage you see something in the distance and it's the way that they show it, it there's no like massive jump scares or anything but it's the way they show it and how it all plays out and then when you see the footage of the the girl's face you, you kind of get goosebumps and i'm getting goosebumps right now you get goosebumps and you go oh my god that is disgusting but at the same time you're like oh oh i need i need to know what happens and i'm glad i found certain things out so it wasn't a massive jump scare moment, but I think the story and the lead up to that was enough to put it high up on this list. <laughs> and at number four is a closet scene in The Conjuring from 2013. Another movie that has a really good build up to a scene that has a really good payoff at the end of it. And it's a film that does it all the way throughout. There's a lot of good jump scares in the Conjuring movie and it's not one of those films that just hits you over the head with a jump scare after jump scare after jump scare it's a film that builds it up it earns your respect all the way through the movie because of the build ups and the build up to this one was when the little girl's banging her head off the, the closet door and then people are waking up to find the noises and her sister's trying to put her back to bed and at that point I'm like okay that must be all we see at that point because before it, we get scenes like that that lead up to nothing. So I thought that was going to happen. But when she turns around and looks up and sees, I think it may be Bathsheba or one of the, the, the evil spirits up there, and you see the face and the way it pans in. Again, the score was great. It gave you a big jump scare, not only visually, but audibly as well. And then it jumps down on top of the girl. That scene in the cinema as well, watching it at the cinema, Everybody jumped out of their seats at that moment because it was a fantastic payoff. Never get out of bed again. Never get out of bed again. And at number three is Zelda from Pet Cemetery from 1989, the original. Now, 
everyone has something that they're scared of as a kid that they tell everybody about as an adult, and Zelda is one of those characters. Now, there's a lot of scenes in Pet Cemetery where Zelda would scare me because Zelda was a very scary character, but there was one scene in particular where she's hiding in the corner and then she comes forward to the camera saying like, never get out of bed again. That scene, that scene frightened the life out of me growing up. It scared me so much that anything that resembled Zelda, I was scared of. Do you remember the movie Mask from 1985? Uh, the story about Rocky Dennis? That movie scared me because he resembled Zelda. And I don't know why. It's just something about the the body that just scared me growing up. Obviously, there's conditions out there. And as an adult, you respect it a lot more. But as a kid, visually, something like that scared the life out of me. And Zelda was up there with the, the scariest looking characters of all time. And then number two is the Moors scene from An American Werewolf in London. There's something so claustrophobic about that scene, even though it's out in the wilderness. That's how claustrophobic and isolated they make that scene. It's the sound of the werewolf circling David and Jack going round in circles. Just the, the, audio, the audio in that scene was fantastic. And the film was made in 1981 as well. Watching it today, though, it's still the same. It still has that scary effect that you know what's going to happen and you know what's out there. I'm petrified of werewolves. Werewolves are my biggest fear, even though the werewol werewolves don't exist, of course, but they're my biggest fear. Any movie with a werewolf in it, I will watch, but they seem to be, to me, the scariest films. And I think it all stems from An American Werewolf in London. That scene at the beginning was just frightening, absolutely frightening. And the payoff to that scene was just as scary as the build-up to the scene. Them leaving the slaughtered lamb, going out in the middle of nowhere, not knowing where they are, and then just hearing that noise, not knowing what it is until it attacks. <laughs> and when it attacks, I'm like, oh my God, that's so scary. Absolutely love that scene. And then number one comes from an American werewolf in London as well. The underground scene with the man trying to get away from the werewolf. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again for the sake of this video. I used to have a dream, thanks to this scene, where I've got this lane where I live. And the lane is about the size of a football field. So the lane is only about six foot wide. And it's the only way to get from A to B in a certain part of my area. And I used to go down this lane when I was a young kid, because there was a little hut at the end of the lane, which was a shop as well, where you buy a newspaper and stuff. And my mum would always tell me, can you go down to the lane shop to get me a newspaper and some rolls? And I would go halfway and I always look behind me and I look forward. And I think, and I say to myself, if something came after me and it was fast, I wouldn't be able to get to the other side of the lane fast enough before it got to me and I couldn't go back the way. And I would always have this dream where the werewolf from an American werewolf in London, would I would go halfway and I would see the werewolf at the end of the lane and it would start running towards me and I couldn't get back fast enough. You know, you have those dreams where you're running really slow. I would always have those dreams and the werewolf would just come in full pelt after me and I'd wake up before it gets to me sweating and I'd be like, oh my God, that movie is the movie that done it to me. And to this day, that's the reason that werewolves scare me so much. And as you know, the top two on my list are from the same movie, An American Werewolf in London. Going back to that scene in the underground, that's what got to me because we get to see the view from the werewolf as well, going down like the, the escalator and things like that. Oh, the, it, it, the scene was so beautifully shot because of how it happened. The man in the underground himself, so quiet and alone. And you just hear the growling, the little low noise growling from the werewolf. You know what it is, but that guy doesn't know what it is until he sees it. And then you see the look in his face, pure terror, frightening. And it frightens to me. It frightens me to this day. So that is my top 10 scariest moments of all time in horror movies, guys. Like I said, everyone's completely different. If you don't, if you don't fear werewolves, you might look at my top two and go, what a wussy. But I'll put my hands up and admit it, guys. Even though werewolves don't exist, that's the thing I'm most scared of in films. It's not serial killers. It's not ghosts. It's not vampires. It's those goddamn werewolves. 
absolutely frightening. But let me know your top 10 or even your one or two scariest moments in horror movies, guys. Leave them down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> To get you, Barbara. Ever play in the pack? Ah! Ah! I want to look back!